Dangerous kids reacting to life sentences. I was recommended this. Let's see what's about. I'm very tempted to just say, I'm not going to accept this sentence agreement. We'll go to trial. And if you're convicted you of familiar. felony murder, you'll go to prison for the rest of your life. That means you'll die there. Is that racist? That's what I'm tempted to do. Damn, die. Die there. Damn. Luckily, I haven't been in this courtroom, no courtroom, any courtroom. Send them to jail. Lock them the fuck up. What? A baby? It's a crazy introduction already, man. What the hell type of criminals we got in this? Ninth grader who's in court for murdering his 24-year-old school math teacher. Calling Why? On damn. 22nd. She must have failed the video, bro. God damn. See? Now we can't even fail people in, in peace, bro. Get Fs and want to blow up the school and sh Man? God damn. She could have the one bad grade and he just decided to murder her. That's some crazy stuff, man. Colleen was known for her dedication to her students. And on that fateful day, she had asked Chisholm to stay after school for additional lessons. Little did she know that her kindness would lead to a horrific end. Chisholm came prepared with a knife, a change oh, of clothes, so mad? And gloves. He followed her into a restroom where he took her life. His brutality didn't stop there. He robbed, assaulted, and abused her. Afterward, he disposed of her lifeless body by placing it in a garbage bin and dragging it behind the school. In a futile attempt to cover up his crimes, Chisholm went into town and used Richard's credit card to buy a movie ticket. However, he was traced down and arrested by the police the next morning. What the hell is wrong with people in the world, bro? What what did I just hear? What were the events leading up to this? Cause like all she did was ask him, did he want to stay after? Like what, what was the background here? I need to know more information. He still had Colleen's blood on his hands. While the magnitude of Chisholm's crimes is daunting. That's him right there. Courtroom behavior will leave you in disbelief. Philip Chisholm faced multiple charges, including murder, aggravated and armed robbery. He did do that Throughout word. the court proceedings, Chisholm displayed a shocking lack of remorse even as the victim's father read his statement. Killer knew exactly what he was doing and has never shown remorse. His demeanor and actions demonstrated a complete disregard for the gravity of his crimes and the immeasurable pain he had inflicted on Colleen Why do you Richard's do that to family, a teacher though? I just don't understand. Even of a touching tribute by Colleen's brother. Put this animal behind bars the maximum possible sentence. Do not give this coward the opportunity to shatter another family's lives. Chisholm remained cold and unrepentant. His attorneys claimed that he was mentally unstable. But that didn't work. I don't know if that's a good enough excuse for what he did. That's like almost premeditated. I don't know if it counts as premeditated, but it sounds like premeditated to me. Yo, he could have just flunked out of school, bro, dropped out. and man had to take a life. Like what? Court will impose the mandatory life sentence for the murder of Colleen Ritzer and set a parole eligibility date of 25 years, the highest level our law allows. However, while Chisholm's reaction could certainly be dismissed as an effect of a mental illness, the same can't be said for the case of 19-year-old Spencer, who allegedly started shooting at a crowded Halloween party on the campus of the University of Southern California. This some stuff that scared me. It's like a screen right, movie. Four individuals were injured in the shooting, but fortunately, there were no fatalities. That if you are so intent on killing someone, that you're willing to shoot them, and at the same time, open fire into a crowd. Following the shooting, Spencer was detained by the Los Angeles Police Department for questioning. A couple of days later, he was charged with four counts of attempted murder. The prosecution argued during the trial that the shooting was the result of an ongoing feud between Spencer and a rival gang member. Of course. Noting that Spencer himself of course. was a documented and well-known gang member. I'm not a bad person, but I made a mistake. Nah. I don't know if I believe you. I don't know if I believe him at all, actually. He does look like a thug. He looks like a thug, bro. You open fire in a crowd and expect us not to think that you're a gangbanger when you have gangbanging history. Like, you're lying. We're not letting this animal, this, this, this cretin back onto the streets, right? Throughout the trial, Spencer maintained his innocence, but the jury disagreed. Spencer also pleaded his case. The judge sentenced Brandon Spencer to 40 years to life in prison for the four oh counts of attempted murder. When Dang. Spencer heard his sentence, this was his reaction. Let's not forget the infamous incident involving 15-year-old Martise Fuller, 
who's facing charges including murder in Kenosha County, Wisconsin. I stopped in my doorway and I looked at him and I said, oh my God, Mark, please. I said, please, you don't have to do this. And he looked at me and he said, yes, I do. Fuller broke into his ex-girlfriend's house with a handgun. He fatally shot his ex-girlfriend in her bedroom have while I she seen was this listening before? to music. Her mother, who rushed to the scene upon hearing the gunshots, confronted the assailant and was shot twice, but survived. During the trial, he showed little emotion. Fuller pleaded not guilty, but the jury ultimately found him guilty on three counts. At his sentencing, Fuller, perhaps for the first time in the courtroom, displayed some emotion. If he think he's gonna get off? I don't understand, bro. I got some advice for y'all. There's a lot of people in this world. If you are heartbroken, someone broke your heart, someone cheated on you, lied to you, there are so many people on this earth. You can find another one, a better one. Even if you believe that's the person that's for you, I promise you, there's always somebody out there in the world, bro. You're going to be fine. He continued to assert his innocence and delivered a statement through his attorney expressing his apologies this is during COVID to the family. Mr. Fuller's prepared a statement that he asked that I read on his behalf. Bartice writes, wholeheartedly, I wanted to write this giving my sincerest apologies to this family I once shared time and love with. Truthfully, I am sorry about the pain. I don't believe him. Look at this face, bro. He's not believe. He, it's not believable. It's not believable at all, bro. How many of these people just need to be locked up? Why are y'all even fighting in court? Y'all gonna lose anyway. I don't understand what y'all fighting for. Like you're going to jail, prison, wherever they about to take you. You're going down, bro. You're going down. He didn't even read it. You know why he didn't? He didn't read it. He don't believe that. Sh he didn't even write it. They probably got somebody to write it for him. And I hope you all can eventually see in your hearts and vision that I am not the person the media has made me out to be. The judge Did however, she see wasn't you? convinced that Fuller could do better in the future. You are a very dangerous and a damaged human being. So in the interest of protecting the public, acknowledging the seriousness of these acts, the court orders that on count one, you are sentenced to life in prison without eligibility for extended supervision. Despite the gravity of his sentence, Fuller appeared largely unaffected. However, as we saw Fuller's unconcern with his sentence, it brings to mind the strikingly similar response of Jennifer Mee. When I walked up, I was to the corner. I heard the first gunshot after the first gunshot, I ran. At 15, Jennifer Mee became popular as the hiccup girl due to her sudden bout of uncontrollable hiccups. She even appeared on shows and events. Eventually, she was cured. And her popularity I've never ended. heard her. But Jennifer wasn't satisfied. She needed the fame. So she and her boyfriend, Lamont Newton, and another friend, Lauren Rayford, they just look evil. I might be racist to my own race. They just look evil. Whatever they about to accuse them of, they did. I, I believe it. I believe it, bro. Look at these mug shots, bro. Come on, man. Let's be honest. We seen this and it was like, yo, he they robbed a, a liquor store. I would fucking believe it, bro. I would. So she and her boyfriend, Lamont Newton, and another friend, Lauren Rayford, set up a robbery with victims she had met online. Oh, the trio lured a 22-year-old man to a vacant home where they robbed and fatally shot him, taking $50 as the reward. As if... $50? $50 That's it? If I gotta kill somebody, it better be for more than $50 bro. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. Yo, you threw your whole life, bro. You could have posted news on the internet and got that shit back, bro. What you, what? There's so many ways to make money in this world. $50? Bro, what the f Killing somebody for $50 is the dumbest shit I heard in my fucking life. You deserve jail time. Everybody involved deserves the maximum penalty. You could have robbed a damn store for all that, bro. Got like a hundred or something. God damn. Taking $50 as the reward. As if Jennifer's offenses weren't enough, her demeanor in court will leave you dumbfounded. At 19 years old, she was arrested on charges of first degree murder. During her trial, this recorded call she made to her mother while in detention was played for the jury. Hello. Hi, Mama. Hello, Jennifer. What's going on? I'm in jail. Why are you in jail? From um, first degree murder in the first degree. Who did you kill? I killed nobody. It, it all went wrong, Mama. Who are you trying to kill, Jennifer? Nobody. It wasn't even supposed to happen like that. He admitted it. Jennifer was sentenced to without the possibility of parole. Crass up. Jennifer's co-defendants, Rayford and Newton, were also sentenced to life imprisonment for their roles in the murder. 
However, when emotions run high in court, the actions of Jennifer Mee and Alyssa Bustamante leave us questioning sanity itself. Was her throat cut? And Alyssa said yes. And that's when grandmother, uh, the grandmother broke down and began crying. Alyssa Bustamante was a troubled 15-year-old girl who lived with her grandparents and siblings in St. Martin's, Missouri. On October mm. 21st, 2009, Bustamante lured her nine-year-old neighbor, Elizabeth Olton, into the woods behind her house. She strangled, stabbed, and slit the throat of the innocent girl. What? And buried her in a pre-dug grave. Why? What it would be like just to kill someone. What the See fuck? See life just drain out of someone, I wonder. She then went to a church dance as if nothing had happened. Police found Olton's body two days later after Bustamante confessed to the murder. She was arrested and charged with first degree murder and armed criminal action. She pleaded guilty to a reduced charge of second degree murder in exchange for avoiding a trial and a possible life sentence without parole. At her sentencing hearing, Bustamante apologized to Olson's family and said she regretted her actions. However, the judge was not moved by her remorse. Me either. Sentenced her to life in prison. Lock her ass up. Of parole after 35 years. 35? She shouldn't get no fucking parole. She killed a young little girl for no reason. Like, no reason at all. However, let's compare the jaw dropping reaction. My kid's gonna be out, bro. To the My kid's gonna be out the womb by then. 18 year old Nicholas Cruz. My name is Nick, and I'm going to be the next school shooter of 2018. My goal is at least 20 people with an AR-15 and a couple trace rounds. A gunman who carried out the deadliest high school shooting in U.S. history. So this is why people don't want to come to the U.S., bro. This is exactly why people don't want to come to the U.S. They say the U.S. is a bad place. We got mother on the internet talking about something. I'm about to be the number one school shooter. Yo, what does that even mean, bro? What does that mean? Like... How do you, how are you in competition for being a school shooter? I might move to Canada after this, bro. I ain't gonna lie. I might have to move to Canada. At least 20 people. His goal is at least 20 people. I didn't even see that the first time. Buddy had a fucking goal in mind when he wanted to shoot up the school, bro. When he indeed shot up the school, he had a goal of 20 people. Like this a fucking Call of Duty kill streak or something. What the? My name is Nick, and I'm going to be the next school shooter of 2018. My goal is at least 20 people with an AR-15 and a couple tracer rounds. A gunman who carried out the deadliest high school shooting in U.S. history. Oh, you said Who's number one. You said next. Wounded 17 others at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School. He almost got his kill streak. In Florida. That nigga almost dropped a nuke. 14th, 2018. Oh my God. Oh my God. He used a semi-automatic rifle that he had legally purchased a year earlier. I came out and asked him, what are you going to do with the rifle? And the reply was, I go shooting with my friends on the weekends. I just want my own stuff. Despite the horrifying nature of Cruz's offenses, his actions during sentencing managed to shock everyone present. Cruz was arrested and charged with 17 counts of premeditated first degree murder and 17 counts of attempted first degree murder. He oh, don't let him out, bro, charges, ever. Admitting his responsibility for the massacre. What's going on today, bro? The, the, the demons, man. Demons? Voices. Voices, Voices and demons. Y'all are talking to... I mean, I mean, man, if I did that shit, I would have been dead, bro. I would have been dead. I would have been dead as... Bro, they having a whole conversation. What's going on today, man? He just killed 17 people. What do you mean what's going on today? Like, we know what's going on. He's a killer. He's a killer. The fuck? Hey, bro. The, 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 the demons, man. Demons? Voices. Voices. Voices and demons. Where's the voices? Where the f am I? Holy sh What happened? He's not even a good actor, the jury bro. Did not reach a unanimous verdict on whether to recommend the death penalty for Cruz. As a result, he was automatically sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Count it! Each of the 17 murders, as required by Florida law. He was also he was a Yo, kill to him. Is this the, minutes. uh, the park shooting? The Parkland shooting? You deserve the death penalty, buddy. I don't know how you didn't get it. But you definitely deserved it. As a result, he was automatically sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole for each of the 17 murders, as required by Florida law. He was also sentenced to an additional 34 life sentences for the attempted murders. At his sentencing, Cruz attempted an apology. I am very sorry for what I did, and I have to live with it every day. And that if I were to get a second chance, I will do everything in my power to try to help others. And I am doing this for you. And I do not care if you do not believe me. I don't. I love you. 
and I know you don't believe me, but I have to live with this every day. I don't, you went in there with the intention to kill. You literally recorded a video. Yo, yo, are we not using that as evidence or something? He literally said, I'm going to be the next school shooter of 2018. Went in there, guns blazing and killed 17 people and 17 were injured. Yo, what the f That's 34 people, bro. What are we talking about? How did he not die? I ain't never wished death on nobody. I know I said, you know, life is so meaningful, but this nigga just took 17 lives and ain't die? What the f He even laughed at one He looked like Jeffrey Dahmer, bro. Cruz's lack of emotion and his escape from the death penalty outraged and disappointed many of the victim's relatives who had hoped for a different outcome. The case of 18-year-old Donta Wright, a teenager who was involved in the murder of Jordan Klee, a high school student and athlete in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Wright and two other youths planned to rob Klee of his drugs, clothes, and shoes, but Klee fought back. Wright then shot him in the back of the head. This boy looked familiar. Instantly. Just when you thought Wright couldn't sink any lower, his behavior in the courtroom will leave you stunned. I think Wright I've seen this before. Wright was and charged with felony murder, armed robbery, conspiracy to commit armed robbery, and felony firearm possession. The family of the victim read a very emotional victim impact statement. But this is how serious Wright felt about their pain. Sincerely hope that when you gonna start laughing. You wanted so badly that you felt the need to murder my son was worth the next at least 52 years of your continued existence. You won't get the luxury of raising your child because you took mine away. When he was called to address the court, Wright shocked everyone. I'm gonna tell y'all, I'll be home soon or I'll be Keon. I love my family. That's all you got to say. Wright showed no remorse or empathy for his actions. His attitude in court shocked and angered the judge and the victim's family. The judge reserved some choice words for him. I'm very tempted to just say, I'm not gonna accept this sentence agreement. We'll go to trial. And if you're convicted of felony murder, you'll go to prison for the rest of your life. That means you'll die there. I say do it, bro. Why did he even go up there and say that? I feel like if I was a judge, a lot of motherfuckers would be in jail. That's what I know. Cause if you would have said that, I'd have been like, yeah, that's how you feel. I'm gonna make an example out of your ass. <laughs> 25 years, <nigga. laughs> minimum. <laughs> it's nothing compared to the explosive- Someone got beat up with a hammer? 13 year old Antonio Barbo, 14 year old Nathan Pop during their trial. She said that she's going to have to call Antonio's mom. And Antonio kept looking at me, and then he hit her in the head. In September 2012, Antonio and Nathan conspired to and brutally murdered Antonio's great-grandmother, 76-year-old Barbara Olson. Oh my gosh. They are some true villains. That defenseless old lady, y'all then murdered her with a hammer. I know she probably had a heart attack, mid attack, bro. Oh that's crazy y'all gotta be real evil to beat a grandma up with a hammer she can't even do nothing she'll probably get hit like this with every like you know what i'm saying you know how old people be flailing all flailing and shit life alert won't help her this time bro god damn man beat her ass with a hammer antonio's great grand they trying to get like money old barbara olson the retirement funds? her to death using a hammer and a hatchet then stole her purse. life insurance what's even more chilling is that after committing this heinous crime they used part of the stolen money to buy marijuana and pizza we were gonna try i hate to i hate people scare her to get money and then use force if needed when you say use force if needed was there a discussion about what type of force you might use um an attack uh i guess to kill during the legal proceedings, What's a marijuana? Barbo changed his plea from not guilty by reason of mental illness or defect to no contest, reaching an agreement with the prosecution. However, he was very remorseful. I know I don't show my emotions much. I myself am not sure why, but that doesn't mean I don't. All these kids just need love at home, bruh. Nathan Who raised also them? had some things to let off his chest. I just want to say that I'm truly sorry for everything that happened. However, despite his plea and expressions of remorse, he and Nathan were sentenced to life imprisonment. They were both remorseful as they left the court. However, just when you thought you'd seen it all, another convict surpasses Antonio and Nathan's wild courtroom display. I am a 16-year-old blonde. Probably all I have to do is cry in front of the jury, and they're going to feel sorry for me. 
on charges of second-degree murder. What? In March 2013, Schumacher was babysitting his 18-year-old girlfriend's child while she went to work. He was inside a Springville home shared with his parents. Tragically, that evening, Schumacher beat the 23-month-old Austin to death. What the f*** is wrong with y'all people, bro? What the f*** is wrong with y'all? Y'all are beating babies? This y'all second time, bro. This is the second time I heard someone beating a fucking baby. Do y'all have no limit? God damn, bro. Schumacher was arrested and charged with the murder of the toddler, along with child abuse charges. Schumacher claimed he didn't intend to harm the child or cause his death, stating that he was trying to get the child to stop crying. At what? You knew not to keep pounding your fist. That is a crazy that excuse. Baby's head there. That little boy had to be terrified. Probably he had a hard time breathing. And then you repeatedly punched him so hard as to cause his death by bleeding on the brain. If you thought Schumacher would be remorseful, this motherfucker cries, is crazy. Yo, he's crazy. He tried to get a baby to stop crying by punching it. Yo, he must have been on some drugs that day or something. I don't have no other excuse for it. He had to be on some crazy drugs, and that, that baby crying was really irritating him. So that man just went off the rail if you thought schumacher would be remorseful for his crimes you're wrong as schumacher entered the courtroom for his sentencing he couldn't even get settled behind the defense table before breaking into tears that's right schumacher expressed how sorry he was for his actions however we believe him chat the judge wasn't fooled the i'm judge not fooled pointed out a recorded phone call between schumacher and his mother the record will show that you admitted on July, that on July 23rd, 2013, in a phone call to your mother from the holding center, you stated, I am a 16-year-old blonde. Cocky. Probably all I have to do is cry in front of the jury, and they're going to feel sorry for me. Despite his second attempt at an Stupid. apology, Schumacher was handed the maximum punishment of 25 years to life in prison. However, this sentence was later modified to 18 years to life. However, What's the difference? While some may attribute Schumacher's reaction to juvenile delinquency, it... this is 18 year old Shondell Jackson. <laughs> who's facing charges of murder in the Milwaukee County Courthouse. Jackson and his friend were out to rob when they crossed paths with 21 year old Nathan Potter, a University of Wisconsin Milwaukee college student, heading to his apartment. The friends approached Potter, demanding money, but Potter was only a student and had no money. When Jackson realized Potter had no cash to offer, he shot him, killing him. How are you mad at somebody because they broke? And you killed them because they broke? You broke too! We should kick him. Oh, you know what I'm saying? He should off himself. That's logic. How you gonna rob somebody, get mad that they broke and killed him? Some of these don't make sense, bro. I'm not gonna lie. Some of these make no sense. This this man was so mad that he was broke that he shot and killed him, bro. Didn't even give him a chance to make no money in the real world, bro. Just killed him. He was still in college. After the murder, Jackson fled to Mississippi, but was ultimately arrested thanks to a tip from his uncle. We don't have enough time to think about a whole lot of things now because you just can't take nobody to life. You know, that, that's just wrong. As if killing someone Respect. at 18 was not outrageous enough, Jackson's actions in court were even more dramatic. During his trial, Jackson's actions in the courtroom drew attention. Here, Jackson is gesturing towards the victim's family, totally unremorseful about his actions. Jackson was quickly escorted out of the courtroom, but as he was leaving, Jackson flashed a disturbing smile toward the grieving family. Now at his sentence, nah, he's evil. Jackson's mother had an opportunity to address the court. He's evil. When I saw it on the news, I, I even cried. I'm like, oh my God, I can't imagine what that mother is going through. I never had a clue that my child had anything to do with it. My son is not a monster. He he is not a monster. When Jackson um, was given the opportunity I think he is. to speak, Jackson surprised everyone. Apologize for my behaviors. Please don't take my life from me. That's right. That's it. Last ditch attempt to save himself. Jackson pleaded for leniency and offered an apology for his actions. Now it is time for the judge to deliver his sentence. Lock in, judge. To protect the community, which I also fear for with Mr. Jackson, and I am going to sentence uh, Mr. Jackson to life imprisonment without possibility for extended supervision. I know that that is something that is reserved for the most serious of cases, and I. But you can't look back, and he was like, "You look a little hater. How are you mad at them? Cause they happy. Cause you going to jail. How are you mad at them? Cause they." 
they going through tears of joys. Like, yo, this man is, this might be the craziest one I've seen so far. This one, cause in, he's interesting. He's interesting. God damn, bro. I'm happy you getting locked up too. I'm a hater too. What? <laughs> I'm broke too. What you going to do? Nah, I'm playing. You need to protect the community, which I also fear for with Mr. Jackson. And I am going to sentence uh, Mr. Jackson to life imprisonment without possibility for extended supervision. You look disgusted I like you that killed that him. Something that is reserved for the most serious of cases. And I... Jackson was sentenced to life imprisonment without the possibility of parole. But when Jackson heard that he would be spending the rest of his life in prison, he couldn't contain his emotions. What are you about to try to do? Deputies had to intervene, restraining Jackson as his anger flared. Watch again as Jackson pushed this cop over. Fortunately, this cop was able to wrestle him to the ground, while this officer here unbuckled his pepper spray and put it to work. Amidst the yeah. chaos, a member of Jackson's family has a shocking remark for the Potter family. Pepper spray? Eventually, Jackson was led out of the court to spend the rest of his life behind bars. But Nathan Potter's parents had a few things to say. Our little girl was afraid. She was afraid that he was going to try and kill one of us. I hope it is he spends the rest of his life in jail. Jackson's friend and accomplice pleaded guilty to acting as the lookout in the crime and received a 12-year sentence. Despite the terrible behavior of Shondell's family in court, the uncle who tipped off the police maintained his stance despite threats.